wow, this is exactly like I remember it. It was just like this. We had the same pot belly stove. You're a little bit, Jay. I was only two years younger than you, Jack, when we were taken from our home and put into a room like this. What is this? This museum is alive. It remembers where we've been. It is the keeper of memories and the cornerstone of a community's history. It breeds with stories that illuminate how ordinary people overcame enormous hardship and strife. The Japanese American experience in the Bay Area is unique and unlike any other. A rich tapestry of blue collar work, professional success and innovation that has shaped the community's legacy since the first migrants came to the valley. Today, it brings to life a past which cannot be lost nor forgotten. My name is Miki Tsuchida. I'm 80 years old and I'm a Sansei. I was born in San Francisco and I lived in San Jose near Japantown for over 30 years with my family. Because I'm third generation my grandchildren are all Gosei, fifth-generation Japanese-Americans. I want my grandchildren to know about our Japanese heritage and understand our history. It's crucial to remember, and I hope he remembers that I shared this with him. Why did you have to live in a room like this? Couldn't go to school? When I was six, the war started with Japan. So me, my dad, and my mom, your great-grandparents, were put away because we were considered dangerous. Why? Because we looked like the enemy, even though we were Americans. What began as a humble research project about Japanese-American farmers has grown into one of the most treasured additions to San Jose's Japantown. Gary Okihiro, Ken Iwagaki, Jimmy Yamaichi, and Eiichi Sakue were the lead visionaries behind the Preservation Project, which started in a single room two doors down from where we are today, in the Issei Memorial Building. It was originally called JARC, Japanese American Resource Center, and the name was changed in 2002 to better reflect our current mission. This is what started it all for us at the museum. It's a book by Gary Okihiro, Japanese Legacy, and he explains the agricultural history or the beginnings of uh, the contributions that the Japanese Americans made. And so with that, uh, Gary approached uh, the JACL and he asked the JACL if we could, um, if we could borrow a, one of the rooms in the East Day Memorial Building. So uh, the JAC was all for it, and not only were they all for it, they gave us seed money. Well, we really should be thankful for Ichi because, uh, for, uh, for in my mind, for a couple of reasons. One, of course, he made a finan tremendous financial contribution to the development of JAMS and JARC because initially JAMS was in the IMB as a rental, right? And then we first got a permanent home at, in the uh, uh, Ishikawa house because of Eiichi's contribution. So he knew Dr. Ishikawa very well and they were good friends. And so when Dr. Ishikawa moved, Eiichi and he decided to, that he could sell the house and he would buy it and, and give it to Jams. So that's really when we became a permanent kind of museum and we changed our name to Japanese American Museum as a result of that. Jimmy Amaichi, one of the museum's founders and curator, remains one of Japantown's most recognizable faces and a part of the museum's DNA. He is the vital link to many first-hand stories. I think that the, John leaves them the idea that we're not bitter about this, the being discriminated. We, we fought the issue head on and then did what we had to do and not to have 
a big rally saying that we're being ostracized, they just, just quietly do things and kind of go along with the flow of the public. There are so many treasures here in the museum. It's incredible what we've been able to collect and display in the space we have. We start off by showing the original Japantown and how it began. We walk our visitors to the back where we have the largest display of agricultural equipment on the West Coast, donated by the Sakoe family. And of course, no story of the Japanese American experience is complete without a full look into the incarceration and camps. The museum also showcases the artifacts that were collected from camp life. The Japanese Americans were so skilled at creating beautiful works of art from very little. The barracks room, built to the exact dimensions by Jimmy Yamiichi, gives the visitor a sense of what everyday living was like in camp. We then have the stories and memorabilia of the military intelligence service and the 442nd, detailing their incredible bravery and service to and for the United States. And lastly, we have a rotating exhibit area which features various exhibits that help us highlight specific events and people. The Japanese American Museum of San Jose is a vital resource for teachers and local educators. Our museum is a cornerstone of the community, showing young people, the future leaders and influencers, that this history is alive and well right in their backyard. The, the Japanese American Museum is a living, breathing place that teaches my students about the, the stories of the internment and how it's so important today for you know, teenagers to learn about this and, and learn about the stories of the camps and so that this will never be repeated again. You know, whether you're Japanese, whether you're Muslim, whether you're Italian, whether you're Chinese, it doesn't matter. We are all here because of part, you know, of, of the American dream and, and taking those opportunities uh, to, to be here in, in this wonderful place, in this wonderful country. So I get excited when, when teachers want to bring their classes um, here to have them see it, feel it, maybe become a part of it. So I really encourage that they, they join us in whatever capacity they, they would like. Keeping these lessons alive and well for the next generation are made entirely possible by a significant group of people, our volunteers. We have close to 200 volunteers who keep jams running throughout the year. They are the beating heart of our mission, sustaining our programs and welcoming new visitors and old friends back to the museum. Several times people will come in. Uh, these are like grandparents or great grandparents that either were in camp or some connection to someone who was. And they come here and their children and grandchildren, maybe great grandchildren, really hear for the first time what their grandparents or great grandparents had to go through in the internment. And I sometimes see people, families that start getting tearful, that are crying because of what's here. That's very rewarding to know I can be part of that. And after 30 years of the museum serving the community, what is in store for the next 30 years and beyond? As a community hub, the museum will serve as the cornerstone of the Japanese American experience here in the Bay Area. Its purpose is to thrive for years to come. The museum is grateful for the support from the community leaders in helping us get to where we are today and we look forward to their continuing support. Maintaining this community hub takes hours of work and voluntary service from our community. Without it, we could not sustain this generational lifeline. As we prepare for the museum's next iteration, we have major goals to see through. Restoring the Kawakami House, installing more rotating exhibits, adding resources for our members and visitors, and finally, our overall goal is to solidify the museum as a community hub for years and generations to come. What's really unique about this museum, it was, we're celebrating the 30th anniversary of the museum. It was started in 1987. The museum is run solely, until recently solely by volunteers, which is amazing. And the funding source that we received here is mainly through people that um, donate money to the museum, 
or through a legacy program in their wills and so forth. What we're looking for in the near future is a funding source for the Kawakami House. This is a very unique structure and it will be um, an element that we would like to reach out to the community both for your advice about what to do with the structure but also as a funding source besides grants that we can reach out to. As an organization that has been run 100% by volunteers, we look to the community to help us financially support our expansion efforts. So, as we grow in the future, we hope you will continue to support us. I'm very excited to be a part of this Japanese American Museum of San Jose. I look forward to working with the board and, and all the great volunteers. Uh, we have some big projects coming up, like the Kawakami House, uh, expanding maybe our exhibit area, and uh, looking forward to uh, meeting everybody and working with you. So JAMS is acting as a committee hub, collecting, preserving, and sharing our story with the Greater Bay Area. I think it's even more important today, given our political climate, that we share the story. So please tell your friends about JAMS and have them visit today. Today, what I learned is that my grandpa had to leave his home and he couldn't go come back for a long, long time. Will you remember that he brought you here today? Yes. <laughs>